hi to everyone we are live hi to everyone we are live for the very first time um, we will be talking today about how we can take the plane with confidence how you can reduce your anxiety we're gonna go over all the steps that it comes to it so that we can fly with confidence so I'm just going I'm going to wait a little moment to see if uh, there are more people coming on to this live and then we're going to start. So whenever you're here, just let, let me know your name, let me know from where you are watching from. I know we have people from all over the world, so just let me know where you're from and, um, and we, can get, we can get started. All right, so for those who don't know me yet, I am Lindsay Lucine. I am the founder of the Vision Lost Travel Community, and which is growing to be a beautiful community filled with adventures, inspiration, and to support each other in our travels. So we share our travels, our tips and tricks about traveling with a visual impairment or blindness, but we also share our doubts and our fears. Eventually, we come together in this group to celebrate everyone's small and big wins. And this, this webinar will be recorded and posted on our Facebook page, on the Vision Lost Travel Facebook page. So if you need a recap, don't worry. If you uh, can't follow right now, you can all watch this later on and you can still make comments on it or ask questions and I will come back to the questions as you need. Don't want to miss anything, subscribe to our page. We also have a YouTube page that recently started. Maybe you've seen the um, maybe you've seen the interview that I did with uh, surfability. Just put yes in the comments if you've seen that. Uh, otherwise, you can find that on the YouTube page. If you don't want to miss anything, I will keep interviewing interesting people. We will be interviewing people that are traveling, being blind. We, I will be interviewing other people that are very interesting for you. So you get more information. So if you don't want to miss anything of that, just go to the YouTube page that's called Vision Lost Travel and just subscribe there. And like that, you are not missing anything. All right. So... We're going to talk a bit more about flying today, so just let me know, have you flown before? Would you be flying for the first time? Maybe you would be flying for the first time with your visual impairment, or maybe it would be the first time flying with your guide dog. Just let me know in the comments below what would be the case for you. If maybe you've done it multiple times before and you just want a little bit of help on how you can do this to reduce your anxiety or be better prepared for the next time. So obviously flying is stressful for everyone. There's so much that is out of our control. We don't control the environment and also being in the airport, it is not the necessary, the most zen place to be. I would recommend going for, to a spa for that, to be more zen. Maybe your anxiety kicks in, even just thinking about it. Well, today we are going to take all that away and I am going to prepare you as well as possible. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is mainly the practical side, how we're going to prepare ourselves. Um, I'm going to talk about the whole process, how it goes when you enter in the airport until you are uh, on the plane. But stick till the end, and the end I will give you five precious tips on how you can handle flying and you can handle your anxiety better. So in the end, I'm going to talk a bit more about the anxiety aspect of things. But to reduce our anxiety and reduce our stress, of course, the better prepared we are, the better things are going to work out for us. All right. <clears throat> So when it comes to booking the flight, everything starts with the preparation. So booking your ticket, there it already starts, where I can give you a couple of things to think about. So if you want to book the cheapest flights, it is proven to book about three months in advance. 
and to make sure you, when you search for your um, flights to book it in the incognito tab. So you have on your internet page, on your Google page, in the right corner, you can click the incognito tab. Because what happens is that uh, Google knows that you are searching for your flights. So every time you look again, every time you search again, the prices are going to increase because they know that you want to get to that destination. So check those prices, do your Googling in the incognito tab. And also compare the prices that you see on those websites, on different websites. Compare those prices with the actual flight company page. Because often on the flight company page, it could be cheaper because you get rid of, of the middleman there. So definitely go and check it out at the actual company as well. Then also start thinking about where do you want to be located on the plane. So definitely when, you're, when it's your first time or you're dealing with a visual impairment, um, I would suggest that you book an aisle seat close to the bathroom. I always do that as well. I like to be able to stand up, walk around, not having to ask the person next to me to stand up for me to go to the bathroom. If it's in the front or in the back, that doesn't necessarily matter. Um, but if you have that aisle seat, definitely if you're flying with a dog, if you have that aisle seat, it makes life so much easier for you. Um, so I would definitely recommend that. Who? Who is flying mainly with a partner or a friend? Just let me know in the comments below if you are flying with a partner or a friend. I have some really good tips there as well because I think we all like to have a little bit more space on the plane. A little sip. We all like to have a little bit more space on the plane. And definitely because on planes nowadays they try to push it as full as possible. The seats are getting closer and closer together. So what you can do is when you are flying with a partner or a friend, then I would suggest that you pay, first of all, the extra fee to have them sit close to you. Nowadays, you have to like pay extra so you can choose the seats. I would do that. Make sure you're comfortable. Make sure whenever you are traveling with your partner or a friend that you have that seat that you know where they are that they are close to you that also reduces some stress of not being teared apart and a good suggestion I can give is when you're with two people try and get to the three seater side so mainly those are the sides so where the windows are and have one person book the aisle seat and the other person book the window seat so what happens is the seat in the middle is still available and if your plane is not completely sold out, a lot of people are going to try and avoid that middle seat. Nobody likes to really sit in, in between in the middle there. So what happens that if, as people are trying to avoid to get to that seat is that you could be able to have the three-seater for yourself. Of course, this is not a guarantee, right? So keep that in mind. It's not a guarantee. Don't be like, oh, Lindsay said I'm going to have three seats. No, no. This could be a trick where it might happen that you have three seats. If it would happen that somebody does go sit in the middle because it's a full flight, then you can always ask if they want to switch with the window seat, which is barely ever a problem. But you increase your chances of maybe having three seats, maybe having some extra space, and of course that would be that would be great if that uh, that would happen. Another, um, what I heard before too, is that people that travel with uh, a friend or with a partner, that they would book the two aisle seats next to each other. So you're sitting next to each other, but you have the aisle in the middle. Um, that makes that you both can get up very quickly. If you need assistance with something, you're both out of your seat very fast. But you need to keep in mind as well is that the people that are sitting next to you, they need to ask of you to stand up to go to the bathroom or you are the one that is a little bit, little bit in the way. So you're always the one like getting up for having the other people uh, being able to go uh, to the bathroom, right? So keep that in mind. So just let me know in the comments below who is watching. Just send me a message. Where are you watching from? I'm very curious. I'm curious. Uh, currently in uh, Mexico, in Playa del Carmen, so I'm, I'm traveling. 
and I would love to know where everybody's watching from. For me, it is Sunday morning, 10 o'clock. I don't know what time it is uh, wherever you are, but just let me know. All right, guide dogs. We're also going to cover guide dogs. For people that know me, they know that I have a history in guide dog training. So obviously I flew more than a dozen times with guide dogs as well which was a new experience for me because I come from Belgium. Belgium is a tiny little country. We do not fly with dogs in Belgium. We drive everything because everything is maximum two hours away. But moving to Canada, massive country, mainly after class or after anything, we have to fly with our dogs. So that was a new experience for me. And I would like to run with you through that as well, how we exactly do that. So booking your ticket, when you fly with a guide dog, you have to let them know. Let them know that you're flying with a guide dog because they will make sure that the seat next to you is available. So you have that extra leg space. You have two seats leg space. Don't worry, that is completely without extra charge. That is something that the um, airline provides for you to be more comfortable with your guide dog. Keep in mind, this is only for official guide dogs. Official guide dogs that come from an actual accredited guide dog school. Um, but definitely take that chance. So you book your ticket, you let them know, I will be traveling with a guide dog. Um, of course, I, as I said, I've flown a couple of times um, in Canada with a guide dog. And of course, the one time that I fly with the biggest dog I have ever flown with, it wasn't a dog I was training. It was one that I was just uh, helping to transfer. It was a massive Labrador, black Labrador retriever. And of course, on that moment, the flight was completely full booked and I did not have the extra seat next to me. So I already knew that before boarding the plane, like, okay, they let me know there won't be a seat next to you. So I was already getting a little bit nervous. Like, of course, I have the biggest dog I've ever seen with me right now. And happens the moment that I get there that the person next to me is a basketball player who already has his knees against the chair in front of him. So we were both looking at each other and we were like, oh, okay, this is, this is going to be uncomfortable. But everything went well. The people next to me, they all loved dogs. They were super friendly, super understanding. So we made sure that everyone's hand luggage was not under the seat, but in the uh, overhead compartments. And eventually the dog just claimed its space wherever there was space left. Uh, I was surprised that he could fit in there. And we had a couple of good laughs because the dog just kept popping up with his head between the legs of uh, my basketball player neighbor. So eventually, I just want to let you know that it is super convenient to have that extra seat next to you, but it is not a right. So as you ask them, or as you tell them, I'll be flying with a guide dog, and you do not have that seat next to you, it is, it is not a right. It can happen that you do not have that seat. So just try and make the best of it, try and protect your dog from the aisle because there's a constant movement uh, going back and forth there. So try and protect your dog, try and make the best of it, you know, um, it happens. There is more space down there than you would think and just, just go with the flow, it will be fine, it's gonna be alright. Okay, so before we are heading to the airport, we're gonna start preparing. I am not going to tell you how many pieces of underwear you need to pack, but the choice of luggage is actually very important. So really think about where you're heading towards. What kind of trip is this? Is it more convenient for you to have a trolley? Is it more convenient to maybe have a backpack? Also think about your health. Uh, definitely reflect on that before you decide what you're going to take. Are you, will you be traveling with a partner? Will you be traveling with a guide dog? Um, consider which arm are you going to hold? Like, how do you like to be guided? What luggage is this per person going to carry? So definitely also have that conversation. When you travel with a guide dog, is your guide dog used to the noise of a trolley? Not all dogs are that brave. So definitely have him get used to the trolley when you decide to use that because it's already going to be a stressful situation for him as well. Anyway, 
Drop in the comments below what do you enjoy. Do you rather have a trolley? Do you rather have a backpack? Just let me know in the comments below. But either what you choose, if it is the first time that you are traveling, it could help to really just go for a small walk with your luggage, with your dog, your cane, whatever you're going to take the person with you and go for a small walk with that setup. And then really make the choice is it the most convenient way um, also think about the destination certain cities for instance do not work well with a trolley because of the sidewalks just being all broken up or you know so really try and think okay what is the best way here do I need to make any changes um, where am I most comfortable with traveling of course the more you travel the better you will know what you need and um, Think also about your hand luggage, so make sure when you do the trial to have all the luggage that you will be taking with you, have it with you, and make sure that your hand luggage fits easily in the overhead bins because you do not want to have the inconvenience of needing to put that um, under your seat where your feet are. You know, you want to have a little bit of space there as well. Then another thing to think about when it comes to your luggage is how easily is it recognizable? How are you going to describe your luggage to a stranger? Obviously, when you have a black bag with, let's say, a, a, a silver handle, well, there are hundreds of those in the airport. So I would suggest that you have a well-noticeable bag. It is much easier to ask someone to keep an eye on, uh, let's say, a pink bag with flamingos on, or a green one with white dots than it is to ask someone to keep an eye on a black bag with a silver handle. Also be careful with tags. Tags can easily get detached from being during a flight from handling it. It can easily break off so do not rely on tags too much. But I would suggest that you have something tactile on your luggage. A piece of fabric on the handle or a rope or anything that is nice and sturdy and is easily noticeable for you. So when you ask someone to keep an eye on your luggage, in the moment you get your luggage, then you can very quickly uh, notice if it is actually yours or not, whatever is obvious for you. You can always put your name on your luggage as well as your address or your phone number. If it would get lost, that they know where to send it to. But in the airport, they always put a label on it for you as well. Just going to take a little sip. Great. All right. So I think all of that makes makes sense. Yes, I see that uh, Heidi thinks when you have a guide dog, the best way is to have a backpack. That is definitely true. So with a backpack, that would be the easiest. But if you have a trolley with a, with a guide dog, just test it out. Test it out with your guide dog. If he's never seen a trolley before, it could freak him out a little bit. Yes, very good, Johnny. You can also put an Apple AirTag inside of it. I don't really know exactly how these guys work, but um, that could be, yeah, that could definitely be an option as well. Thank you so much for that comment. All right, we're going to talk about documents. Definitely double check that you have all the documents you need. Put them in a file that holds it all together and make it convenient for yourself. Make sure you have it ready to take out. Make sure that it's not in your trolley somewhere on the bottom so it wouldn't get wrinkled. No. Make sure it's in your backpack, in your hand luggage. The moment you need it, you can take it out. So I would suggest still printing out your flight tickets. I know it is not necessary anymore. You can practically just go with your passport to the airport. But if you are someone that it's the first flight and if you are a little bit anxious, when you have it printed out, you know that your phone can fail, the system can fail, you have your ticket and you don't have to worry about it. But it is not necessary anymore. So if you don't have it, definitely don't worry about it. It is just for your ease of mind that you can have that. Again, make sure that you have it all on file, make sure that everything is together and that you have all the documents. Think also about your dog. Do you have all the documents for your dog? It depends. Are you traveling out of country? Then you need to check for the country where you're traveling to what you need for your dog. It could be that it needs a certain kind of uh, pills that it needs to take, or it could be that it needs a, a 
vaccination or something like that. And if you need that vaccination, you need to have the papers of it as well. Some countries you need to have like a health certification from the vet. Make sure that you do your research before you take your dog to that country. Make sure that you print out all this documentation, have it in your file, easy to show if it's necessary. Your guide dog that comes from a, an accredited guide dog school, you will also get a piece of paper where it states that your dog is trained by that guide dog school and it's an official guide dog. I press on that because sadly enough there are a lot of guide dogs and service dogs out there that are not trained by official schools and that makes that lately in the last year, two years, definitely in uh, North America, they are checking a lot more if your dog is actually an official uh, guide dog. So yeah, make sure you have that with you, ready to go, no stress for searching it, make life easy for yourself, you know. Um, while we are talking about guide dogs, how are we going to prepare this little guy the best way possible for this trip? So we're not going to feed him before flying. Definitely not if you fly in the morning. If you fly in the morning, the evening meal was the last one. If you would fly in the evening, his breakfast is going to be his last meal for the day. Bring a handful of kibble with you on the plane, so when the plane takes off or when it lands, you have a bit of kibble to distract your dog with. Definitely it's a Labrador, those kibble are going to go in easily. I would also suggest to reduce his intake for his water intake for that day as it will be more stressful for yourself but also for your dog dogs tend to drink more you know also when we get stressed we get a dry mouth we want to drink more but of course when you drink more you also have to pee more so be careful with that with your dog you do not want to uh, have him sit on a plane with a full bladder or anything worse than that so just let bring water with you and just let him have a couple of sips um, at a time, not full buckets of water. There are doggy toilets on the airports, but I have noticed, at least in Canada, these are way too small, way too smelly, and the most dogs just don't want to go on it. What else do you have to bring for your guide dog? So the obvious, his harness, his leash, and his collar. If you can, also bring a vest that says, don't touch, I'm working, or dog, uh, uh, guide dog, whatever, uh, whatever vest you can find. You can even buy those vests online. Everybody can buy that. Make sure you have that, because often what happens in the airports, people are there from different cultures, from different ages. Um, everybody is bored. We're all waiting. And this is the place where they will distract your dog more than anywhere else. So definitely with that vest it will help still people will probably touch your dog um, but it will reduce the chances a little bit so just let me know in the comments below do you have a guide dog do you have a vest like that for him or maybe you want to purchase one i could definitely recommend it because there's already so much going on if people are going to start distracting your dog it is really uh really difficult make sure to also have something for your guide dog to relax with. Something to chew on, a Kong that is filled up. Um, make sure to have a little blanket for him. Everything is very slippery in the airport, very slippery on the plane. It causes stress as well because the dog doesn't have full grip. So what you can do, definitely if you have a golden retriever or a long haired dog, make sure that the hair between the toes are trimmed so he has full on grip. And bring a little blanket, a little thing for him to lay on so he knows he can lay on that be comfortable and nibble on his Kong. I would not suggest using Kong or toys or anything on the plane. Don't give him anything on the plane. Way too easy. It rolls onto the back or it rolls I don't know where and then your dog wants to go get it or no. Don't give him anything on the plane. It is good for the waiting moments in the airport. There you can just de-stress him by giving him something to nibble on, and that is it. Also bring poo bags, of course. Paper towels. I would advise you to bring paper towels. It helps with accidents. Keep in mind, no matter how good your dog is, it can happen. And if it does, 
Try not to be embarrassed about it. It happens. Um, your dog definitely didn't mean to. It is all a little bit more stressful. He is out of his comfort zone too. So definitely be patient towards your dog. Make sure he has done his business. Make sure that you reduced his food and his water intake to try and not have the situation happen. And like prepare yourself mentally as well. If you have a guide dog, prepare yourself mentally and be like, okay, it could happen that he has an accident in the airport. If it happens, it is not the end of the world. You know, in the airports, there are people taking so many pets. I've seen people with the bunnies. I've seen them with uh, um, cats and dogs and everything. And they have accidents. Quite frankly, children have accidents, right? So. Try not to make that a problem. If it would happen, it is okay. It happens. And it is definitely not the first time that uh, the airport staff sees something like that. But we're going to try and avoid it, of course, if it's possible. All right. Next one up. Before you head to the airport, I would advise you to um, check the flight hours. Check how your flight... Um, how the times are. Do you have a delay? Maybe it's cancelled even. We all know how unreliable these flights can be. So check it before you leave because if there is, let's say, a two hour delay, three hour delay, you'd rather be home or you'd rather be in, in your hotel still than waiting another extra three hours um, to know more because sometimes, you know, uh, planes get cancelled as well so yeah so just check that before you go i would also advise you to download the app of your airline of or of your airport mainly it's of the airline because then they have everything they need to let you know if there is uh, a delay don't count it 100 percent i would still advise you to just before you leave have a quick check what the status of your flight is and then uh, go with that Very good. All right. So we are ready to head out. I'm just going to take a quick sip here. <laughs> good. I have a little question from Johnny. Question, does that throw off the schedule? And if so, how, to, how do you adapt the time zone? I am sorry, Johnny. I don't really understand your question 100%. Um, I don't know what throws off the schedule. I don't know what you mean. Do you mean the dog we're leaving in, in the airport? Just let me know in another comment a little bit more clear what your question is. All right, let's get ready to head towards the airport. We are completely, repair, completely prepared. So just put a comment below who likes to be nice and early in the airport who wants to be stress-free, or are you the one that likes to wait until the last minute and just race to the airport and have a whole bunch of stress? Today we are talking about how to reduce stress and how to fly with confidence. So we're gonna, we are the ones that are going to be nice and early because a big stress factor can be time. There can be traffic, you guys. The train can be delayed. Um, it could take a while before you find someone to help you. It could take a while before you maybe find your gate. Maybe. You know, there's so many variables, there's so many stuff that can go wrong that you do not want to deal with the stress of time. If you have enough time when setbacks happen, well, you're still relaxed. You still have enough time. You don't have to worry about that. That is already half of your stress that is not uh, there. So what I mean by that is, for example, if you're going to travel somewhere, do you have to adjust the food intake when it comes to different time zones? Um, that really depends on your dog. If you have a dog, so that is a question that Johnny, Johnny asks, is if you have to change the food intake of your dog when you're tra traveling to different time zones. Um, I definitely recommend moving the days before, moving your food towards the time zone that you will be in so that you you do not have like huge gaps let's say when you you move different time zones and it's only an hour difference i wouldn't really worry about it but if you have a big time zone change in the three days leading up to it you can definitely start feeding on different times so it comes closer 
to the, the time zone that you will be in? Very good question. Thank you so much for that. I really love that. Good. All right. So as we are going to be nice on time, because we have a little bit more things to think about, to worry about, we need to get assistance in the airport, all of that. I actually suggest that you would go to the airport an hour more than what they suggest. So let's say for like national flights, they ask you to be there an hour and a half in advance. I will be there two hours and a half in advance. For international flights, if they ask you to be there three hours in advance, we're going to be there four hours in advance. I know that seems like a lot, but it's going to be fine. As long as, you have the, as long as you have the time. You can wait in the airport, you know, you can, you can keep busy there. You, sh you know you have the time that you need, so that is a big stress factor that falls, falls away. So do not have to worry about time management. We're going to be there nicely on time. Okay, again with the guide dog, so keep in mind before you enter the airport to definitely let your dog relieve. If it's possible, please have number one and number two out of your dog before you relieve because this could be the last time that your dog relieves until you get to your destination. As I said before, there are doggy toilets on the airport, on the airports, but mainly the dogs do not want to go on it. Um, and you do not want your dog to be on the plane with a full batter. Another tip that I would like to give, and it is one that I use myself all the time, prepare your lunch and your snacks. Yeah, you do not have to worry about food and bringing food on the plane or on the airport to eat. It is never a problem as long as it's not liquids. So you can bring liquids on the plane. We'll talk about that later. But when you make and you bring your own food, that is also something you do not really have to worry about. You don't have to um, worry about getting anything in the airport. And to be really honest with you, it is crazy expensive. So whenever you want to buy something in the airport, they will rip you off. It's a very expensive. But also, mainly for us, it is like if anything inconvenient would would happen if anything unplanned would occur at least whatever you're dealing with you know you have food in your backpack and you know you don't have to worry about that so we are set on the hungry side of things so whatever happens we know it's going to be with a full stomach I also like to bring an empty reusable water bottle you are not allowed to bring liquids um, through security, so your water bottle has to be empty to go through security. But the moment you are through, in every airport you have filling stations. So you can just fill up your water and you have nice fresh water to drink. So also again there, you don't have to worry about finding a stand to buy drinks or food. Or But if you have the time, you still can. But, you know, if things have a little bit of a delay, you know, you have everything with you and, you know, you don't have to worry about um, anything there. Good. Some who brings their cane to the airport? I know definitely for uh, the visually impaired amongst us. We don't always like to use our cane or bring our cane, but please bring and use your cane. If you don't have a guide dog, right? When you have a guide dog, your guide dog shows nicely that you are visually impaired. But other than that, bring your cane, take your cane out, use it. Even if you have your partner with you guiding you, just use your cane because it will make life so much easier and so much faster for you because you have that visual aspect of showing that you are visually impaired or blind um, and people will come up and help you much easier you will get um, so much faster somebody to come and assist you so I would definitely definitely advise you use your cane it's going to reduce the stress as well even when you are traveling with a partner that person might be a little bit stressed as well and they also have to like look where to go and then they have to assist you and you know, there's a lot of people around. Just use your cane. You have it. Go for it. You will be able to skip the lines because of that. I can only see advantages of having your cane out. So when you are flying alone and you arrive, let's say, with a taxi or with public transport, if you arrive with a taxi, you can ask the taxi driver 
if he can help you to make contact with someone of security or a flight operator, definitely if it's the first time. Just ask if he has the time to just help you quickly go inside, find someone, anyone who is wearing a uniform because these people are there to help you. It could be that it is a security officer and they will help you get to the right uh, part. But do not be afraid to ask for that help. That's why they are there. It's their job. So definitely don't worry about asking so you get to the right, the right person. When you're flying alone but a friend or a family member drops you off, then you can have them help you with, of course, finding the right... Uh, the, the right baggage claim. They can help you with checking in your baggage. I am not sure about other countries, but in Canada, whenever you have somebody with you, let's say a friend or a family that drops you off, they're not flying with you, they just drop you off, they can get a temporary ticket to go with you through security gates. So they can actually go with that temporary ticket through the security gates. They can go with you to the gates and wait until you are actually on the plane. Not a lot of people know that. So that is for Canada. You need to check that for your own country. But it never hurts to ask. You know, you have that company until the last moment, right? Like you have somebody go through security with you. It's a lot more fun if you can do that with somebody that you know and that you trust. and. They can wait with you until until you get on the plane. So that definitely also reduces that stress of not really knowing where to go and this and that. Of course, you know, the above is only necessary when you need that extra support. I know a lot of you guys are already very brave and, you know, it's not the first time and you, you just want to do things on your own. That's fine, too. I am just giving you that information that it's there. So when you want to use it, you can use it. So otherwise, let's say you're completely on your own, you're just trying to have contact with anyone that has a uniform, or if you have your residual vision and you can find your flight company, you head over there, and you're gonna ask them for assistance. Let them know right away that you are blind or visually impaired, and that you need help. They will help you there with your ID card, they will help you with checking in your boarding pass and checking in your luggage so everything is taken care of and mainly they will ask a volunteer or a staff member to come and help you out to get you through security. So once your bags are checked in, of course also when you have a guide dog, just let them know again, a little reminder like, hey, this is a guide dog. This dog will be flying in the cabin with me. So again, that they just know that there will be a guide dog and that they need to have that extra seat next to you right? It's always good to give them little reminders because there's so many different people involved. Um, they might ask for the documents of the dog, but that might not always be the case, right? So, once your luggage is checked in and you have all your documents, everything is okay, then they will help you towards a specific seating area. This seating area is where all the people gather that need assistance. It could be to fly anywhere in the world, but that is where they put everybody together that need assistance to have them bring you through security and to your game. So you might be joining some elderly people or people in a wheelchair or who knows, maybe also somebody with a visual impairment. So you will be waiting there all together until somebody comes and picks you up to get you through security. So they will ask you to wait there. You'll wait until somebody comes and picks you up. I like to advise to ask the person that drops you off there, because it will be somebody else picking you up, to uh, just ask them how long it might approximately take, right? Because it could take a little, a little waiting while. Let's say they say, oh yeah, you might have to wait like a half an hour till 45 minutes. Well, then you wait for the first 45 minutes, you don't have to worry about anything, right? If it exceeds the time that they tell you, well, then you know you can take action and ask someone around you to give them a friendly reminder that you are still there. I have never had issues with that because it is a specific seating area. They keep a close eye on that and they make sure that people get 
get to their destination. It could also be that they ask you if you need a wheelchair. Do not be offended by that, okay? It does not mean that you look old and crooked, not at all. Sometimes they just like to provide you with a wheelchair because it is a lot easier for them to move you through the crowd with a wheelchair than to, to guide you. And also definitely when you have large airports, they might like drive you around with a cart or anything like that. Um, so I've, I've known people that are perfectly able to walk that say to me like, Lindsay, you know what? I always take a wheelchair. It is so much more easy. And I got over the fact that I'm sitting in it. Um, but that's completely up to you, obviously. And obviously you can't do that when you have a guide dog because, yeah, I don't want to see you sitting there in your wheelchair with your guide dog on your lap. That doesn't really work. Um, so we have that. When they come and pick you up, please remind these people are super kind. They really want to help you, but not everyone always knows how to do that in the best way possible. So when they arrive and they want to assist you to go through security, just let them know how you like to be helped best. You know, do you prefer to hold an arm or a shoulder or an elbow, left, right? You know, just let them know what is easiest for you, how you can help, and then you get rid of the awkwardness of maybe not having the right side or anything like that. So just let them know they love to help um, and that is definitely fine. Going through security is just as thorough as anybody else. The good thing is you will be skipping lines. That is the best part about it. You'll be skipping the lines, but you will be checked just as anybody else. So that means also your cane needs to go through the scanner. Your dog needs to go through the scanner. <laughs> no, it's not true. Your dog won't go through the, through the scanner, not, at least not on the baggage, uh, baggage one, but your dog needs to walk through the metal detector just where we walk through. They're gonna try and have as less stuff on you as possible. So for your dog, you need to take the harness off. You need to put it on um, where the baggage goes. You need to put it there. They need to check that. They're gonna try and have your dog go through completely naked. So I have had oftentimes that they ask to take everything off because on the leash and on the collar there are metal pieces so they want everything everything off so what they usually will do is you'll ask your dog to sit and wait you will go through the metal detector and then you're gonna call your dog towards you do not panic if you do not feel comfortable let's say you just picked up your dog it is brand new dog you, you're not sure if the dog will actually run towards you tell them that let them know like in no way possible I'm taking this dog off leash then it could be that somebody else walks your dog through for instance um, so do not do anything you are not comfortable with but be prepared they will ask you to have your dog completely naked going going through um, also for yourself you're not gonna go through with your cane um, somebody will probably just walk you through without having anything on. Small tip there, something that I always do, I make sure that I'm not wearing any hiking boots or belts or any f jackets or f too much that you have to take off and then put back on and it's so much, so much a hassle. <sighs> Try to avoid as much hassle as you possibly can. Just wear sneakers and they won't bother you uh, with taking off your shoes. So if you have flown before, um, just put in the comment section below if you have flown before. I would like to know if there's people that have never flown before or have never flown before with their visual impairment. But if you have done it before, um, you know when you go through security, they do not want uh, you bringing in liquids. So if you have a reusable water bottle, make sure that's completely empty by the time you get there. And the limit on liquids is usually 100 milliliters per bottle and they want you to put it in separate plastic bags, so see-through Ziploc bags. Those do not have to be specific bags from the airport. Um, so what you can do is just save yourself the hassle, do that at home, just make sure you have your liquids separate in bags at home, put it on top of your uh, backpack on your luggage so you can just take it out like, okay, here it is. You don't have to dig for it or find it anywhere. Um, and make your life easy, you have it ready. 
And the other thing is, as well with laptops and tablets, you have to completely take it out. Take it out of your bag and take it out of its sleeve or whatever protector it's in, and you have to put that on in a, in a different uh, security box. So those are all things you have to take out. It is so much easier and faster if you have all of that ready, if you know what's what you're gonna expect, and you can just take it out. You don't have to dig for it, search for it. The least stress as possible is obviously the best. All right. All right, I see some people that have never flown. Exciting, exciting. All right, Johnny had the best experience flying by himself. That is awesome. Love that. So we made it into the terminal now. We made it through security. Oof. For me, usually that is the point where I can feel like, okay, I can relax a little bit. The worst is over. We made it through security because sometimes for security, it can take a little bit of, of time to get through. So that's the point where I feel like, okay, the worst is over now. <laughs> when you go through with an assistant through the security and you are in the terminal, this is the best time to ask them to use the washroom, you know, to ask them to help you with um, filling up your water bottle, going to a food stand or drink stand or a little shop or whatever you need at that point, ask them there. Because once they put you at your gate, they're going to disappear, right? So the moment you're through security, you can be like, oh, hey, can, you know, I need to use the washroom. Can you show me that? And then they will gladly help you there. Um, and that's the perfect time to do so. If, uh, let me see. See, so of course, all of this is also within your abilities, right? Like, um, if you've done this so many times before and you just, you, you can just roam around or everything like that, it's completely up to you. Uh, but keep in mind, once they kind of put you at your gate, um, they will seat you in front of where everybody is waiting to, to board. Usually they, they disappear and they go get other people, right? They have other jobs, uh, other jobs to do so within your abilities you do not have to sit and wait there for an hour if you do not feel like it um, that's completely up to you again there too if you have a cane make sure your cane is out uh, definitely before boarding so everybody kind of knows like okay this person will be boarding uh, with priority if you have a dog it's pretty obvious that that is uh, what brings you through um, so, keep track of your time. So just check from time to time if your gate didn't change. If you have the app, it will say through the app. Usually they call it through the speakers. Usually somebody will come up to you and tell you, but still it can help to just from time to time check if it's still at the same gate, if the time is still the same, if there's no delay or anything like that. because. It might not happen. It might not happen that someone comes up and, and tells you because they are busy doing other things, right? So just be in charge of that. Keep an eye on that and you will be fine. Um, and now it is time to kind of calm down and kill time a little bit. And, and there I would make sure that you have something for your guide dog for him to keep busy with, something to nibble on. You know, everybody can just wind down a little bit. Try to know yourself well, like what relaxes you. Is there a beautiful podcast you want to listen to? Maybe you want to listen to some music. Maybe you want to watch a series or whatever, you know. Whatever you do that kills time, that makes you feel good, that relaxes you, is, uh, is good on that moment. So when you are waiting at your gate, it will be very clear when you have to board. Um, you can't miss that. You will be priority boarding, as I said before. So they will ask for your ID card and your flight tickets. So just make sure you have that in handy. You don't have to look for that. You already have it ready. You will be one of the first people on board of the plane. And I would advise you to take that offer you know sometimes people are like oh yeah no it's not necessary don't make it harder you know take that offer somebody will help you on the plane 
It will help you put everything in the overhead bins. There is still space on the overhead bins for you because you're the first one in there, right? Definitely if you have a guide dog, you want to have your hand luggage out of the way. Um, the only downside of that is as you are arriving as the first one to board the plane, you will also be the last one to get out. But I only see advantages, so somebody will be assisting you inside the plane. What you can do is the moment you are inside the plane, ask them where the washroom is. So you already know where it is, you don't have to worry about that. Don't ask them before you seat it. You're going to install your, co uh, your dog in a comfortable position, so you have the le least stressful way to board. If it's the first time, you can ask your flight attendant to show you how to operate the seat. So once you are up in the air, you know how to recline your seat and you know where the light or the bell above your head is. If you need assistance, that you know which button you need to push if you need assistance. All right. So, yes. So as I said before, is you will be also the last one to get out of the plane. So when you have layovers, keep that in mind. Don't take your layovers too short because it takes time to get off the plane and then back on the plane and you don't know you don't know always sure how things are going to go in the airport of your layover. So make sure you have enough time so you don't have to again stress about time management. And then you're on the plane. You gotta make sure you're comfortable, make sure you have your tablet or your phone with you, keep your snacks close. Snacks are very important. Just make sure you have everything close by so you have a calm flight. Again, if you have a podcast you like to listen to, whatever you need to kind of calm down, wind down, make sure you have headphones so you don't listen to all the noises the airplane makes or whatever goes on. And don't be shy to ring the bell if you need assistance for anything. Do you need the washroom, for instance, and you're not sure what, what you're going to do with your dog because you're alone? Well, just ring the bell, push the button, ask the flight attendant to take care of him for a couple of minutes, and I believe me, you will make their day. So I also had to use that very often. I have a small bladder, and every time I asked the flight attendant, they were like feeling like they were the chosen one to take care of the dog, even if it's just for five minutes. Um, also keep in mind, definitely for people that have never flown before, the cups that they give you when they give you a little bit of water or coffee or whatever, they are first of all very small and very bad quality, so they're easy to spill or push over. I always use my reusable cup. Um, it's never been a problem, they just fill your reusable cup. And you know that cup, you know it's a good quality one, you know you don't have to worry about spilling or anything like that. Um, that makes it a lot easier as well. And then definitely rethink or even do not ask any hot beverages when you have a guide dog. Too easy, they come up and they push the, the, the little table and then they get hot coffee over them. You do not want to be in that situation, so just don't do that. All right. All right, so Sharon will be flying again next year. How exciting. How exciting. Well, I really hope, Sharon, that these tips help you out. Um, if you have more questions, just put them in the comment section below. Thank you so much. It is time to get off the plane. So, as I said before, you will be the last one leaving the plane. So once the wheels hit the ground, just sit back and relax, you know, while other people are jumping up and standing up and banging their hand luggage against each other's heads, trying, you know, getting them out of the overhead bin. Just keep in mind, whenever that seat bell sign goes off, everybody kind of goes a little bit crazy. Somehow they think they can exit the plane faster if they all go a little bit crazy. So it's not going to be you. You're just going to relax. You're going to you're just going to wait until everybody's off the plane and until they come and assist you to get out. So they will help you. They will bring you to the luggage claim and there it is good to uh, ask them again if you need to use the bathroom or maybe your dog needs to go to the doggy toilet so you can ask them like can you show me where this or this or that is um, if you need that. 
And now comes the hack of having unique luggage. So if you can describe your luggage to the assistant, they can help you so much easier finding it. And then you have the tactile part on it. So you can double check if it is your luggage and if you have the right one. And from there on, you have your luggage. The next step really depends on how the rest of your day is gonna go. You know, are you gonna be picked up by a taxi? So you can ask the assistant to bring you to a taxi and taxi brings you to a hotel. Maybe you go with the train, maybe somebody will pick you up. So from there on, it is really depending on how the rest of your, your day is gonna go. Um, so this, this is the whole practical part. Let me know what the questions are about that. Is that complete for you? Do you have anything that's unclear? Just put it in the comment section below. I will get back to um, those questions before we head over to reducing anxiety more. So I can imagine for some people that flying is very frightful. Um, just wanna let you know that you are not alone. A lot of people are scared of flying don't let that hold you back for exploring the world you know like we have fears and fears are there to overcome so we're going to work towards overcoming those fears that's just how it goes so being afraid of flying is okay and you are definitely not alone in this um so i gathered a couple of tips how we can help you when you are really scared of flying, when you are really uncomfortable with doing so. And there is one person that I really love and that I like to follow overall in, in, when it comes to anxiety and, and such. I really like to watch um, Mel Robbins. I don't know if anybody knows Mel Robbins. If you do, let me know in the comment section below. So she is someone that has uh, struggled also with severe anxiety and she very casually shares with us how, how to overcome things in day-to-day -day life. And I feel like she helps a lot. And if, if you're looking for somebody to look at or you know, to get more tips from in day-to-day -day life anxieties, Mel Robbins will definitely help you out. Um, she has a lot of videos about how to deal with anxiety. So check that out. I really love her. And um, I also got five tips from her to help with uh, flying when you have anxiety. And I find that they are very powerful. And I would like to share them with you. I'm also going to put that video of her um, on the page. I will share that with you. It's a really good video. She just goes over her process of flying while she is on the plane. So it's, it's really good, it's really powerful. But we're gonna go over the five steps that she tells us that will help us with flying with anxiety. So what you wanna do, the first step, what you wanna do is before you board, you wanna have an anchor thought. So really have a thought that's like, okay, once we are done with this day, once we are off the plane, what am I looking forward to the most? Maybe you're going home and you're just looking forward to hug your kids when you come home. Or maybe you are going ahead, you're going towards a travel destination and you're like, oh, I just crave going to the beach and feeling the sand between my toes. Just pick one thought, pick one thought. Okay, I'm gonna go home and I'm going to hug my children. And that is your anchor thought. And that is the thought that you're gonna keep in your head throughout this whole flying process. So whenever things get a little bit more tough or you have a setback, you're gonna keep going back to that anchor thought. Okay, I'm going home, I'm gonna hug my children. I'm going home, I'm gonna hug my children. Or I'm going on this trip, I'm gonna put my toes in the sand. It's gonna be amazing, you know. Keep that anchor thought stuck in your head. We're gonna keep coming back to that. And then the second tip is recognize your triggers. For people that have flown before, throughout the process, there are a bunch of triggers that can, that can follow. It could be, for instance, the doors closing. Like the doors close, it, make, it makes a loud, loud noise. Uh, maybe it's turbulence, you know? Tur turbulence, for, turbulence is actually very normal on a flight. I know it freaks us out a little bit, but it is, it is as normal as a car driving over cobblestones. 
you know when a car drives over cobblestones we don't worry about it. it's cobblestone so but when a plane goes into turbulence it is similar to that it does not mean that the plane is gonna fall out of the sky no it is normal turbulence is part of it but try and recognize those triggers okay okay there's turbulence you recognize that 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 makes you anxious and you're gonna go back to that anchor point okay there's turbulence but I'm going home and I'm going to hug my children so keep mindful of what you're feeling because very quickly our brain can sidetrack to starting to panic but we're gonna trick our brain we're gonna keep thinking about the end process so your brain is gonna think okay we're thinking about the end process so it means that we're gonna make it through this flight right the third one is everything is a good sign the fact that the doors close means like you're one step closer to getting to your destination the fact that you that we are going off the ground and all of a sudden there is a, a, a part where the plane levels out it feels always weird a little bit of butterflies in your in your belly you know but it's a good sign it's again one step closer you need to get to your destination and every part of the process brings you closer to that to that destination then the fourth one is we're gonna set ourselves up for success so again as I said before what music calms you down what podcast do you like to listen to make sure you have headphones bring your own headphones they, they give this shitty ones on the plane but lately you even have to pay for it so just bring your good headphones your noise cancelling ones right so you can sit back and you can relax and you do not have to constantly listen to all these noises that the plane makes because it makes a lot of noises and you don't always know what it is and and it, it can easily start anxiety while it is not necessary so just make sure your brain can be triggered and that you're listening to something that makes you happy that you love a podcast where you can focus on set yourself up for success and then the last one is a very powerful one that I would like to share with you all before we wrap up this uh, webinar and that is something that Mel Robbins created that I use as well in in my day-to-day -day life and that can help you with any kind of anxiety uh, thoughts and that is called the five second rule I don't know if anybody ever heard of the five second rule from Mel Robbins otherwise put it in the comment section below but the five second rule is actually you're going to reset your brain so what happens is definitely when we are anxious but also when we are sad or angry our brain starts to get into a loop we get into a loop of oh my god um, let me think oh, oh my god the plane there might be something wrong with the plane I think I think something's gonna happen you know I'm scared and and your brain gets into that loop and it just repeats and repeats and repeats which of course is not good for us you know if we keep repeating a bad thought it, it keeps us in that anxiety or sad or angry state so a way to reset our brain is counting down from five to one so whenever your brain gets into a loop that you do not want to be in, you're going to stop that by counting 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And once you get to 1, you head back to your anchor thought. So whenever you get anxious, okay, okay, the plane, I don't know, it's the, I don't know this noise, this noise scares me, and yada, yada. You're going to start, okay, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. I'm going home. I'm going to hug my children. This is going to be all right. And this is a rule that, it, it sounds silly, I know, you count a nine from five to one, it is so silly, it's so simple, but I promise you it works. I use it in my day-to-day -day life as well, whenever I get a little bit uh, frightened. So I will put that video as well somewhere in the group. And um, yeah, this is the main informational part of uh, the webinar. Let me know. What are the questions? Shoot, you guys have me here live, so whatever questions you have, I am ready to answer them. For the people that are watching the replay, if you still have questions, just comment them below. I will get uh, back to you on those questions as well. Um, so yeah, let me know what, what are you thinking about. Um, hopefully this webinar has helped you. I'm going to do more webinars in the future, so if there is a certain problem or issue or question that you have that you would like to see worked out, that you would like to have more information about, 
Send it to me on the group. Send it to me in an email. If you want to uh, contact me personally, you can always email me visionlosstravel at gmail.com. Email me. If you need me, I'm there. Um, I hope you are all enjoying this webinar. I hope you're all enjoying the group and the community. When you have friends or family that are visually impaired or blind and you think they might enjoy this group as well, just invite them. They just fill in a couple of questions and they are in the group. Um, I will also be interviewing people. So if you know any, anyone that's interesting or as I had the surfability interview, whenever something is interesting, whenever you want something more worked out, like I am there for you guys. Let me know. I would love to know. And I would thank you all for being here today. I thank you all for joining me on the chat, listening to me today. And I hope you had a great time. And um, I wish you all a great day and a great week next week. And keep traveling. And just keep putting yourself out there. Everything will be all right. And um, I promise you, we will be celebrating your wins. And whenever there is something up, you know how to contact me, visionlosstravel at gmail.com. All right. Thank you all, guys. And I will keep seeing you guys in the group. Bye.